Hi everyone, this is Mo and in this video I'm going to explain you what is flashboards and how we can take advantage of flashboards in order to protect uh, our basically smart contracts, our DeFi protocols uh, in the Ethereum ecosystem. But before we get started and basically discuss flashboards and see how we can develop that or basically incorporate that um, in our program, uh, first we need to understand MEV. So for those of you you who are unfamiliar with MEV and front running or sandwich attack, um, you can listen to this first part and then from there uh, we are going to uh, talk about flashboards and have a better understanding about flashboards and how it can be useful for us. All right. So um, in the Ethereum ecosystem, you know, we have a whole bunch of miners like other networks, but there is an unfair advantage for miners. So that means miners can actually manipulate the flow of transactions, okay? So there are a whole bunch of different techniques, but uh, the, the well-known one are known as front-running or sandwich attack. These are the most reputable approaches, but there are also like uh, back-running and other approaches as well, okay? So that allows miners uh, to make profit of users, okay? For example, since uh, 2020 up to now, October 2022, the time of recording this video, uh, this technique allow miners or let's call them malicious miners to make a, over half billion dollar, you know, out of, um, you know, exploiting basically the network. Um, or it could be even more, but this is like an approximation number over here. So um, MEV actually uh, stands for um, Miner Extracted Value. You know, and like I said, it's a collection of tricks, you know, for in the Ethereum network that allows miners, i.e. malicious users, to make profit of users. And here users are like traders, you and I. So um, in a nutshell, when you, you as a user make a transaction, it's sent to the Ethereum network. So how it, it works in the Ethereum networks, first it goes to into a data structure uh, or kind of a space. Uh, which is called mempool, okay? So it's a temporary space here. And uh, mempool can be uh, described as an order list, like, like how in a stock market when you try to, I don't know, purchase some stock or sell a stock, you know, you have some sort of order list, you know? So it's a data structure, essentially. And uh, in this order list, we have list of pending transactions that they are not confirmed yet, yeah? They are in mempool in a temporary space right now. So a miner, I mean, a miner here could be a user who basically installed an Ethereum um, node like Git or any other type of Ethereum nodes on the machine. So can observe that because this mempool information is public. So everybody can see it, can observe that, uh, can see, you know, a transaction or your transaction in this case and see for some reason this is profitable. For example, this is a swapping or uh, this is related to a basically DeFi protocol or anything like that. It's an auction. Let's say this is like NFT auction. Anything like that. Anything that based on various measurements seems to be profitable. So profitability here is a whole different uh, branch. So it, it, we have different algorithm to identify what is profitable and what is non-profitable. Okay. But we cast this aside right now. We talk now um, about the, the approach and I just try to... Uh, in a nutshell, explain you the problem and uh, what is the solution here and introducing Flashboard as a solution here. So, okay, a miner or a malicious miner uh, can actually observe this transaction like a user and see which one is actually uh, profitable. And based on that, try to manipulate the order in mempool in order to make money out of it, to make profit out of that. Um, for example, uh, transaction associated to liquidations or arbitrage. So how miner can exploit that? Um, it can basically, one approach is by duplicating, yeah, and broadcasting the same transaction, okay? The same transaction, but, but with a higher gas price. So as you probably know, if you increase the gas price um, for a transaction, the chance that miners actually uh, basically uh, sort your transaction first is higher okay so by increasing the the gas price within you know an algorithm the formula say okay i want this transaction but i want to send that for example this is an nft auction let's say sort of speak and i know this thing for based on my algorithms this uh, the result of this auction would be quite profitable okay so i identify a transaction here 
I now go and increase the gas price and put my transaction in front of the a genuine, you know, a legitimate transaction here in the mempool, and uh, and as a result, my transaction get executed faster. And I, for instance, in this case, I win the auction. Let's say. So this approach, simple approach, I mean, it's called front running. So as its name stands for, this is when you basically can manipulate and um, grab, you know, and um, and put your transaction in front. Um, there is also another uh, reputable. Um, attack uh, between the MEV you know series of techniques it's called um, sandwich attack so what is sandwich attack when a miner here a malicious miner anticipate a price increase okay by wrapping a buy order with its own buy and sell order um, and this basically allows the miner to benefit from a slippage okay so as you can see here to put the you know one buy and sell and put you know wrap basically the genuine transaction so here target transaction is uh, number four and in sandwich attack as it names stands for we put you know two transactions before and after that by basically making benefit out of you know a slippage there are some techniques actually you can uh, protect your DeFi protocol, your smart contracts against that. But you know there are various techniques, but they are more sophisticated, and in some cases they are not really practical in some um, in some instances. So uh, we talk about problems. So now we know what is MEV, and we know front running and sandwich attack. So what's the solution? As I said, there are a whole bunch of solutions. So I wrote basically some articles. You can find them in the video description and also some details about front running and sandwich attack and MEV for those of you who are more interested in the security aspect of Ethereum. Uh, but in this video, um, I'm gonna talk about Flashbos as, a, as one of those solutions. And I will show you how you can use this to protect your transactions, uh, let's say in Rust. But you can also use that in different languages and different ecosystems so you can read its basically documentation you can find its link basically in the video description as well all right folks so i just created you know a uh, blank project an empty project in uh, with the help of cargo and uh, this is our rust basically environment uh, within the vsc um, you know ide and as you can see we have the um, basically uh, main function and just the default uh, print line uh, hello world okay so the in order to use flash board uh, flash boards uh, in rust uh, there is a dependency there is a crate it's called uh, ethers flash boards so we need to update our cargo so we also want to use tokyo for uh, for basically handling the stuff um, as a service and therefore you need to add that and also for serialization and deserialization you need to add associated um, uh, associated crates so here we are going to add, you know, uh, our requirements, the dependencies. So as you can see here, this is the basically core uh, crate. We need that Ethers flashbot. So you can read more about that basically on crates uh, IO, and you can just search about that if you want to know uh, more about this stuff. So first, we then we come back over here. Um, we remove the function. First, we update our users. So. We take advantage of Tokyo in order to make a sync basically function or main function here. And after that, we need to basically connect to the network. So the first line actually uh, represents how to connect to the network. And, um, and here I use basically mainnet.eth.aragon.network. So based on the um, flash boots documentation, we need to uh, basically specify the searcher identity here. So this line here basically uh, define our searcher identity. And now we need to sign our transactions. So this line here basically sign transactions. So this line here basically adds signer and flashbots middleware, okay? And this is the address of relier. You know, on flashbots.net. So you can always, you know, do your own research diligent for the updated address and the other sources. And after doing that, now it's time to basically uh, send a safe transaction. So this transaction could be anything. Of course, for the sake of simplicity here, I just use simple transaction. But you can imagine this can be anything from an auction, any uh, basically DeFi uh, action here.
So for example, here we have a simple target user, your friend or whatever, and you want to basically send a transaction through Flashbots bundle in order to protect your transaction against uh, front running uh, and other type of uh, MEB attacks. And therefore you need to add this line, but you know, based on your application, you can actually work on that and make it more sophisticated. This is just a test uh, address. All right, so after that, we need to get the receipt to make sure our transaction actually get executed and everything is all right. So after doing that, actually our flowchart is done and now we can just add some information and type about, uh, yeah, about the result on the console or whatever you like. You can actually handle this outcome and uh, put it in your database or broadcast that to your internal network. So here we basically print the uh, send transaction and here is our receipt. And as you can see, we are done. So very simple, very easy and very useful. And it helps you basically flash what's here, helps you to uh, get around those complexities regarding security and protection of your uh, basically uh, DeFi project of your uh, blockchain app. So I hope you find this video helpful. Uh, if you like that, uh, please write down your comments and you can follow us on social media. Thank you very much. Bye.